So now let's learn the B part to Sally Gooden. I'll play it through slowly and then we'll take it apart. It's another kind of short part like the A part. It's really just four bars long and then that's repeated. Not quite as long as some fiddle tunes. So here it is slowly. Three, four. So if you looked at the alternate picking uh, video that I did, you may be familiar with this first phrase, which is in one of the little exercise examples there. Um, it's just a run up the scale from the G right up to that D, so you're going straight up the scale. And we're going to keep our fingers in this first position that we'd started out on the A part um, of Sally Gooden here. And with, uh, First finger at the first fret, and the second finger at the second fret, third finger at the third fret, and so on. We're going to keep them there for this entire part. Okay. So we just run right up the scale. So when you get up to the B string, you're going B, C, D, right? And you're going to pause there on that D note. And then you're going to come back up the scale, but starting from the B this time. And then go up to the E. Hit that E and then come back down the scale. So it's not just a. That was the little exercise that we did in that alternate picking uh, video. But if we just do this and then kind of start over again on that B, then that's the first phrase of the B part here in Sally Gooden. So let's try that slowly. So before we go on um, to the second half, which is um, kind of similar, it's almost more like just a little uh, scale running down there, and then ends the same way the A part ran. There's a couple things I want to point out. Um, now, now, you want to keep your hand, your, your fretting hand here, in that same position. And the other thing you want to think about is keeping your fingers um, fretted on that note that you're playing until after you play the next note, okay? So if I play that A, I'm going to play that B, and I'm going to keep my finger, my second finger down, right? I don't need to move it yet, right? So the notes can kind of ring together. And then as I go up to B string, okay, I'm going to keep that first finger down as I play the third finger. Now, I'm not keeping the second finger down all the way through. I suppose I could. But the main thing is just to keep it down, keep it kind of planted there until you play the next um, note. And this is this is something that's really important to work on, and that's why I'm kind of starting it here in, in one of these first lessons in this course, is um, a lot of people really think that, that speed in playing fiddle tunes is based on your picking hand. And it's just as important to get your uh, the technique down on your fretting hand as well. Um, one thing by doing that, and keeping that your hand planted like that, it gives it a lot of fluidity, right? So the notes aren't aren't kind of ringing into each other, and you get this legato sound. If you were picking it up, you might get this little kind of cut off sound, little staccato sound if you pick it up too soon, right? If I'm picking up my finger just before I play the next note, it's gonna sound really choppy, right? So it's really important to keep that finger in down until you get that next note. And then as you speed it up, it sounds nice and smooth instead of, that's what you're gonna get if you're picking that finger up too soon. 
The other thing is you want to keep that those fingers in that position. You don't want them to be flying around. You don't want them to be out in the air here. Otherwise, you're going to be... If you're doing that... See how much, much motion is wasted there? The one thing you're... Fing fingers have to keep moving up and down. So this is something to, to keep in mind. Um, and really, you're going to have to, you know, kind of police yourself on this. You're going to have to see, look and see what your fingers are doing and see if you can keep them from moving very far. Um, in addition to keeping them in place and not kind of moving them out here, you want to make sure that they're not kind of... that you're not kind of moving forward with this first finger here. Um, and I've seen this happen a lot, which is why I'm pointing it out. Um, when you go up to the third finger, I've seen a lot of people going. And then the thing is, when you go back, that fin first finger has to look for the first fret again. Okay, so it's really important to keep those fingers there. Also, make sure that this third finger doesn't kind of creep back so that you're playing that it's kind of hovering around here, and then it has to somehow reach out and get the, the, the note. You can keep them right there. Okay, it's a really good exercise. You just work on that little scale and really this whole part to keep your fingers down. All right. Okay, so just think about that whole, whole line. Once again, you're coming up here, so keep that first finger down. And when you're coming down a scale, keeping coming off the note, obviously there's nothing to keep. You, you don't need your keep your other finger down. You have to lift it off to get the note, right? But you still want to keep them in position so they're not moving out of position. Right. Another thing to think about here is the make sure you get the alternate picking down. Now, in that alternate picking uh, video, I showed a couple of variations where you could you're playing hammer-ons and maybe even a slide right, to get those notes so that you don't have to pick all of those. All those. But I think in the, at this point, it's really important just to get this really straight alternate picking so it's down, up, down, up, down, down. And then you've got that pause on the quarter note. So you're going to start over again on a down. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Right? Really get that in your pick so it's really, um, really solid there. All right. So, and you're going to have a couple of those little back, a little awkward back picking um, jumps. Play that A and your pick is kind of moving upward, but you have to, you have to get the next note on the B string. And a down stroke. Same thing here. You play that open B, and your pick is moving down, but you gotta get it back to get that. You gotta go move it up to get that A note. But this is really good practice just to really get your, your pick used to doing that. You're gonna need to be able to do that, and this is a good time to really work on that. Another thing that's important to do is not to drag your pick from that D to the E in the down stroke, and this is something I've seen happen a lot. That's a real common mistake in, in picking here. Is play the, the D note here on the uh, B string, or the down stroke, and then it's it sort of makes sense is to just drag your pick with another down stroke and play the E, right? Because it's right there, but, but then what happens is you've got to, if you you do an upstroke after that, then all of a sudden all your picking is backwards, right? If you do that, you're gonna, you know, everything's gonna get flipped and you're gonna be kind of backwards in your picking. So it's really important to get that down, up, down, up. And that's a really good thing to even just practice that. Just practice playing that D and the E string, down, up, down. You could just practice that over really get used to that hitting a down uh, down stroke on a lower string and an up stroke on the next string.
So that's an awful lot about two bars. Let's finish off this little tune here. So, um, and the last phrase kind of repeats part of the phrase we just played. Right? That was the end of the first phrase. And then it ends like the A part uh, ended. So you've already got all the material that you need to finish off the tune. All right, so we've got this part to start the A part, the B part. We've got a quarter note on that B string and then go back up to that D and come back down with that same little D, E, D. Once again, make sure you're doing down, up, down. And then it follows with the ending. So let's play that B part a couple times together slowly. Three, four. Okay, so one of the reasons I'm, I'm teaching you this tune is to really try and get you started and get that alternating picking um, really kind of ingrained in your hand. And one way to do that is to really think about those downbeats. Just think, of, make sure you know where all the downbeats are. For one thing, it's a good sort of check on yourself to to make sure when you get to a certain note, you know, if you're playing a downbeat, you know, you should be playing a downbeat at that point. So, right, and now I'm gonna if I've picked it right, I will have played a downbeat there. If I played it right, I will, she will have played a downbeat on that note. And then starting over again on a downbeat. And another downbeat there. Downbeat. Okay. So just think about those quarter notes. Dun, 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 dun. And really get that in your pick. It's really even a good idea to kind of stress those. You, when you're playing the tune, you might not want to be quite so heavy on the downbeat, but just to make sure you got that rhythm in there. Notice that the the notes there are really kind of the notes of that G chord. Those are all the stress notes, that G, B, the B, and the D. So pretty much, if you're playing those notes, the G, B, and the D, there, you should be playing them with downstrokes. Okay, so you can really um, kind of watch your pick and make sure that that's happening. Thank you.